Greetings in the name of the Most High. Uh, I'm just coming back from a, a dog flu run. Yeah, you know, the last few days, I don't think I've ever felt so much oppression. I, I don't know what the heck. It's just general. It's not like something personal. It's just, um, you know, I don't know if I, I mention it because I get feedback. Some of you email me, and, and thank you for that. I, I may not have gotten a chance to email you, but I'm saying to you, thank you very much for that feedback. I guess I was right. There was some sort of, you know, at least you perceived it as a some kind of a beam thing or something. I, I call it a beam because it feels like it's a beam. But then it, it, it's been kind of the, almost like they've changed up a few different things the last few days. But none of it has been really... What are you doing, Mr. Eli? None of it has been really... You know, it's this... Well, look, if they have a technology where they can hit us with stuff, I suppose they will. You know? But, again, it's this... Here's what it is. It's this constant... Uh, greetings in the name of the Most High, Zeph Daniel, the Zeph Report. All praise to God, and I pray right now in Jesus' name for protection. Lord, it just seems to me like, and I don't know if this has been true my whole life, but it seems to me that the powers that be are at war with the people. I mean, it doesn't seem, it just is that way, and Honestly, I don't mean them any harm. I, I'm just kind of like, please don't hurt me. Don't hit me again, please. But they, they, they're coming. They want... It's not enough to tear you down and make you feel bad, soften you up with all this kind of soft kill stuff and ambient stuff. It's you know, just kind of bummed out every single second of every day. It's not. That's not enough. It's... It's more like they want... It, it definitely is a spiritual battle. I mean, it definitely is, you know, satanic and is, you know, it all the spiritual battle. It's just manifested in a physical way. But what they want is to degrade, humiliate, and destroy the, the will of humanity to live and then take them all out, just fish in a barrel, and take everything they have in front of their eyes and then kill them. So it's vengeance, right? And that's the spirit I feel like the, the American government has that spirit against the people that it's more like vengeance. Do, do you get that? It's not like, you know, they want to regulate and punish just because, you know, they, they think you're bad and you need to be regulated. It's more like, and even if you comply, then they want more, right? So it's, it's more like the, the end game is they want to degrade demoralize and destroy but they want payback somehow so it's not their war i.e. these are sock puppets it's somebody else's war because you know the only payback I can think of because it's this is vengeance right and the only payback I can think of is you know against God that that would be the only thing and then be, the best way to do that is to just you know like the 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 the, the killing of uh, live babies and then dismembering them and selling the body parts and things like that would be the war against god it's got it, it's can't just be about revenue and then the heinous crimes don't get punished and as we witness all this happening it's more and more of an assault or a vengeance upon us for having been here. But we're not aware of anything we've done to them. Oh, I mean, they'll say Americans have had all the resources and we have to revolutionize this and they're all racist and there's a payback and we got to confiscate all their homes. You know, just like in the Babylon captivity, the, you know, the Hebrews are kicked out of all their homes and taken off to captivity and then foreigners take over that's something that God uses for judgment that's not you know we've we've called that out here we've not called it out but we've 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 recognized that's what happens when you turn away from God you lose your protection and you end up getting you know put out of your house 
and foreigners come in and take it over. But it just seems that it's they want to do that. They want to take every last piece of dignity you have, but that's not good enough even then. They want to hear you scream while they take what's left. They want to hear you suffer. They want to pit one group against the other for slaughter. And even then, it's not good enough. They want to make you sorry for ever having been born, ever having breathed, ever having hoped, ever having loved, especially loved. They want to make sure that you pay for that one. Because you know how your heart is when you love. It's light and it's... You have a bounce in your step, but you feel hopeful about the future when you're in love. I mean, it's there's nothing like it. It's it's uh, when people are young, they have that a lot. <laughs> it's also hormones, but it's more than that. Anyway, so the idea now is to make Americans pay for what they did, which was, I guess, before you were born. Pay for who they are pay and grovel for having dared to think you were free and make sure, absolutely sure that this thing is cut off from the root so only tyranny exists only Orwell's 1984 exists only humans in cages exist with no hope and no light no love, no trust only with a big brother dictating what you will and will not do, how you will and will not comply. Any thought outside of pleasing your government will be punished by torture and then maiming, and then, if you're lucky, death. All right, now that's extreme. You know, I'm fantasizing. I'm obviously a fiction writer here, so I come up with, but that's what it seems like. And when we see dystopian future, you know, novels written for the dystopian, we see people living not much better than that. I just saw one about a train. Um, this uh, uh, snow piercer. And humanity, you know, the elites were in the front and enjoying themselves and having sushi and hot tubs and orgies and decadence and whatnot, and the people at the back were, you know, having to be culled, and they were hurting each other and dismembering each other and, you know, babies, and then they'd depopulate the back of the train once in a while. Eventually, the people in the back of the train wanted to revolt and find out what was going on at the front, find out why they were being, you know, the, 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 the same kind of Occupy Wall Street on a train is what it was. But, and that's the kind of anger that tunes into, say, a Bernie Sanders. Now, then there's the other side, the conservative side, God-fearing side, that sees all these other assaults, including economic. They're going on, and then they are looking to someone like a Donald Trump or a Ted Cruz or somebody that's, you know, and, and each anger is similar. And it, it's all coming from the, same, from the same root. It's being generated by the same few who are there to, I guess now, they're in full torture mode. So now the idea is to torture the people and to make them grovel, make them sorry they were ever born. And anything short of that would be failure on their part. While they especially, while that's going on, it's very important for the president to be at Martha's Vineyard with all the billionaires just hanging out and having a great time while he's talking about how he's got to do something about Ferguson and all the injustices against the horrible... Um, the police, the white people, anyone else who have made this condition. And then, in other places, it's economic. In other places, it's racial. Wherever it is, you're not in Martha's Vineyard, are you? Hanging out with the billionaires and hanging out with Bezos and Buffett and, you know, divvying up the world and enjoying yourselves. You're just wondering if, you, if they're going to come knock your door down or hurt you and hurt your children, you you know, that kind of anxiety, and this is really the point of the podcast, that kind of anxiety, and if you're, if that's not happening, they're beaming all kinds of paranoia at you. 
So you're 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 just kind of like you know barely able to keep your head above water. It seems you know, especially when you get older, you know, having the energy to persevere and have some hope in the future anyway. Anyway, most people today are talking, well, if Obama gets two more years, there is no hope in the future. You don't have to worry about Hillary. This is it. And um, why does this situation exist? Why does he have so much support from so many people when he's destroying the very people that are supporting him? Why am I in something that is so far beyond a concept? The lake of fire would be preferable, please, because that's nothing compared to this. Psychological torture is far worse than hell of burning every day. Fine, burn me. Fine, I'm screaming. Ah, great. But leave my mind out of it. I know I must be being a little bit ridiculous. You know, and and over, you know, exaggerated. But the last few days have been very tough, energy-wise. There's just been hasn't been any, and you know, I'm I'm just feeling like I'm trying to address it through music and podcasts, and trying to help my fellow man cope with it. And then in behind the scenes, of course, I have my life and I do what I can to help people and try to help myself cope. It, I just don't understand, I guess, I'm sorry. I look out and I see what looks like a lovely world. I've certainly had a lot of enjoyment here. I could have had more if I just appreciated a little more the God's creation. But I'm afraid, Lord, that when all these people finally die, they're going to wonder why you made them live. Why did you have them as children? Why did you create them? Was it to just punish them? Because it seems like the real goal of these people is if they could have every single birth be abortion, late term or even post birth, just for the sheer fun of torturing the innocent baby, they would do it. I mean, they do it in so many symbolic ways that, of course, late birth abortion, which no one will touch, by the way, all your conservative Republican Christians in Congress, they won't touch baby parts. You don't honestly think the Lord's going to let you live. The fact that you don't do anything about that, right? The fact that we collectively do nothing. You don't think he's going to let us just walk away. Do you? <laughs> After that kind of incredible warfare and disrespect... How can any of us call ourselves Christians or God-loving? I mean, you don't have to be a Christian. I'm not just God-fearing, just appreciating a life. I don't know. How can any of us call ourselves decent? And yet they're continuing right ahead. Yep. It wasn't Roe versus Wade. They just wanted to get the abortions started. They just wanted to get the industry of child sacrifice and the, and the killing of innocent babies, innocent little beings, going. They don't want to take them out at, you know, four weeks. You know, try, you know, eight, eight months. And that's, then they're all like that. They may deny it publicly, but that's how they roll. I know, I've seen them. I've, 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 they laugh as they do it, too. They think it's funny. They get kind of a high off. You know how they have a little sacrifice of a baby, I guess, with a coven and a witchcraft and a worship of Satan or whatever? Well, this is they get that rush every day. Well, I don't need to go on about that. There's 
I mean, if I tried to do anything, I'd get killed. But same with you. They guard it under lock and key with the entire U.S. military that you pay for. Don't you feel proud of yourselves? Don't you feel lovely every day? See, I can't take it. I feel dirty every day. I feel terrible. They won't ever let me, you know, have. They won't let me. Coupled with that, I'm aware of my own mortality because it's been really difficult the last few, physically on me, the last few days. It's been, I haven't been able to, you know, it's, it's really, I feel my own mortality. I just really realize that my neighbor had to be hauled away because she was, she lost her mind. She didn't know where she was. She ran out of money. She's writing checks. And, you know, the house hadn't had a mortgage on it. They're just a horrible tragedy and she's not that much older than us really got me thinking I see so much of that with my own peer group now how it just didn't work out you know they they were young and they all well a lot of them they were running out to the devil but they just thought that was going to pay and pay and pay they didn't realize they were duped now comes the torture say because that's that's just it's just it's amazing so Lord what is this since hell is so much nicer than this what is this you're wrong Z hell is life without God at all no love no light just pure torture well what if you're aware of all the suffering caused by a few people and uh, as long as those screams are going, you just don't feel you, you can really enjoy yourself with that going on. <laughs> with the babies being sacrificed. With the Ferguson riots being paid for by George Soros and Obama on purpose while he acts like he's at Martha's Vineyard just having a great old time. What, a, what is this? What, no, seriously, I don't understand. Everyone knows Soros paid for the riots in Ferguson. Well, why is there some weird thing with that? How come the Fox News people, they said fair and balanced, they're all sold out. They would never admit that Soros paid for any of that. Even if it was right in front of their face, in you know, with, with bank transfers, they wouldn't, they wouldn't admit it. So what do we do? No, don't worry. Those Fox News people are well taken care of. They're... They're not in your bracket. They're, they're probably in the hundred plus billion dollar category. So they would be like junior elite, and they'd be yep, they'd be more the Martha's Vineyard type. Yeah, see, they, their kids are in private schools, and they're never going to have to really deal with what's happening here out here because they, they're under a big umbrella. So they lie, because. You know, they want to get a paycheck. They try to take Trump out because obviously Trump th threatens them in some way. They want to teach him a lesson. I don't know how you feel, but, you know, with me, it's like I, what I realized today, you know, see, a lot of you are just focused on the economy and whether or not you're going to pay your bills and all that. What I'm looking at is... How much more time, if any, even, thinking that thought. And, uh, you know, that really straightens your head around. I mean, suddenly a lot of these other issues, you know, who becomes president, it, it really doesn't matter. You know, I, it's, the world is the world, you know. But this idea of uh, mortality, in other words, then that's it. When I was younger, I could really appreciate, you know, the river. I used to go down the river on kayaks and things like that. I feel my bones couldn't handle that now. I mean, just, you know, that's just these changes you go through. Oh, I know there's other people, you know, probably older than me doing a lot of stuff, but I mean, this is me right now.
this is not that I'm not them. They're blessed with you know maybe better genes, I guess. But still, not not much longer. Maybe they got a couple years more, but that's about it. I'm not quite sure what this guy's up to, but I, I don't like it. They're chip sealing our road, and uh, okay, all right, dude. Okay, thank you. Bringing water in. Yeah, I've got a gravel drive. It used to be dirt, but it's gravel. I love it. They would just go ahead and chip seal the drive, too. Chip sealing is a very economical way of making a road. We have dirt here, and there's been a lot of, you know, you can't keep your vehicles clean. It's, 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 it's okay, but it's uh, it's been trouble with the snow. Now they've widened it. There's no ditches anymore. And, it won't be littered with cars with the next snow. That would be nice. Yeah, they get stuck. They underestimate this uh, the situation here. Where This is the country. This is, you know, snow can get piled up five, six, seven, eight feet in certain spots. You know what I mean? You drive into it. You don't know what you're driving into. Because being in the southwest, it melts off real quick. So people, they don't really know. Like up in the north, midwest and everything, you have snow that stays there for months. Well, that's different. Anyway, so what do we do? I just saw this woman, though I, I thought I knew, neighbor, and I always thought she was well off, you know what I mean? I No paying of the mortgage, $17,000 of bad checks, and she didn't know. She thought, she thinks she's got money and servants and things to help her. It's, no old woman should be living out out here anyway, having to take care of the, the people have taken advantage of her. Their criminals moved in and they, they stole all her cash and money and got her to write checks to them, although they didn't deserve They just, I don't know how they did it. They took heirlooms, they took everything. Her gun, they didn't know what a gun is, everything. And uh, her daughter finally came out and took her away. And she'd seen her daughter earlier that day and a couple or day before and said, you know, the realtor came by, but my daughter didn't. So, um, but the daughter had been there two hours earlier, you know, that sort of thing. And that just happened very quickly. Very quickly, folks, very quickly. So I don't know, I feel so desperate to hug that tree. Oh, wait, there's so many. I feel so desperate to get my eyes on that cloud. Oh, but it's fleeting away. Everything's going in fast motion. Well, okay. So then I find out from the cleaning woman that uh, who works there too, and she's been with us. You know, she cleans. She's also a house sitter and stuff, and she's done a great job and just a really nice person. And um, she's taking care of the animals when we're gone. Yeah, all that very trustworthy turns out she was working there for a month and hadn't been paid in a month so I uh, well I think she will get paid I think eventually you know I think what they're trying to do is they lower the price and lower the price I mean you can buy this house now for nothing it's got it's a kind of a big property that she built from scratch and she researched it and she put hay uh, straw bale you know big thick walls and did a whole straw bale thing and barn and caretaker quarters and separate guest quarters and all this kind of stuff. Real nice. And it's it's just, it, it doesn't sell at any price. So you couldn't sell it at $200,000. No, I don't know what to say. I, 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 it just seems like a supernatural thing. And um, I see more and more people that that's happening to and I... I realize just getting through the day isn't enough. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out really at this point, what, what is this? You can't say that this is okay. You can't. You know, I see the pictures today of the when there was the rainbow flag outside the White House and 
and you know all the couples oh they might have been same sex I didn't really look that closely I don't really give a damn and they're all kissing and I guess they were they're all kissing in celebration of how nice and open it all is mm. I got news for you there's a whole new wing of divorce lawyers cropping up now because of all that because you know the world is still the world and these people celebrating their victories and these revolutions are nothing but fools. We all are when we do that. Like, our troubles are over now, dude. It's smooth sailing from here on out. No, you got to have it tight with the Lord, man. I understand that because... Well, shoot. What else is there to understand? Without that, I would go completely... I would, I would already be... You know, I would have already lost my mind. And they'd be taking care of me. Well, Godspeed. I don't know what you're going to do with this pod. I'm sorry. I'm usually the cheerleader, and I'm the pep talk guy, and I'm always trying to find a way to cope. And sometimes... And lately... And I don't know. I don't think I'm strong enough for the NFL. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, you know, I got people telling me, Zeph, this is nothing compared to how bad it's really going to be. And I suppose, yeah, if you were in solitary confinement, being tortured every day, and you know, like Richard Wormbrand and stuff, yeah, could, uh, sure. With no hope of ever having it ever end, right? I mean, that that whole thing ended with Wormbrand. But I mean, with no with no hope of ever seeing the the light of the sun again, I suppose compared to that, things are going pretty good. <laughs> I just can't hold on. You know, I've, there's a smile and there's a frown and there's a tree and there's a plant and there's a sky and then it's gone. There's a word, there's a cooperation, there's a collaboration and then it's, it's as if it never was. It was just like, it's gone. There's a, when you're young, you hold on to vendettas, and sometimes those vendettas, you know, those grudges you have, they keep you going, don't they? When you're older, it's hard to hold on to them. Because it, because people, the people you have a grudge against, they die. Right? You're gonna keep, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? They get sick. They lose their mind. They get, you know, they get dementia. The, the tragedy befalls them. And then your heart goes, oh, man, what was I doing? Shoot, I should have been a better friend. Wow. I'm just thinking Obama must be out there in Martha's Vineyard just popping that champagne. and He must really be celebrating all his victories. How he fooled people into thinking he was incompetent when he was actually doing it by design, you know. He had me fooled for a while, kind of, kind of. I mean, not really, but then I would go into denial and then come out again because I just couldn't believe it, you know, what was happening. Well, most people, I mean, I'm doing better than most. Most, most are still in denial. They refuse to acknowledge what's ever happened. They're, they're, to them, this is Disneyland. This is fabulous. Okay, I've got a proposal. I think what they should do is have euthanasia centers. I, I know they won't do this because torturing, hurting, and suffering, and crying, and wailing, and moaning in pain is very much the commodity they're harvesting, not death. We made that mistake that it's a death cult. No, it's a torture cult because you get energy off the torturing. But I would suggest if you really just want to get rid of us all, I mean, why not have a these euthanasia centers where you have like the best day of your life with virtual reality, right? I mean, there was a movie about this, right? And when, you know, they, they would call it, there was many movies about this, but I just saw one recently where they said, you're, you're being enlightened or you're going off to it. And it was called uh, The Giver, The Giver. And they weren't being enlightened at all. They were just being killed, right? They said, they're having that, they're going off into the universe now meaning they were killing them, but the people didn't think that. They thought, oh, they're going off to the universe. How awesome. Let us celebrate their, their arrival at this great state of consciousness that they can go off into the universe. 
So you go in there, and they give you the best experience of your life, you know, like Total Recall or something like that. And you don't even know. You just kind of go, you, you know, you, part of it is like the end of a great day. You just kind of go to sleep, and off you go. All nice. All painless. All lovely. They could depopulate the world. People would line up in droves. Can you imagine? You have the, the young nihilist, 20, 22, who can't go on <clears throat> because life is so tragic. There you go. You can have that. You, if you want, you can go out to blaze of glory. Just, just a complete flurry of... Uh, well, I know that's kind of fantastic, but guess what? It really is like that. I mean, from the big picture, it really is like that. And uh, we'll figure it out. This is just a short, depressing message to um, see if you can relate, I guess. And maybe somehow my lament would help you in some way. Believe me, it's hard for me to share it. No one wants to... I'm not complaining. I'm just wondering what, what's going on. Oh, is that complaining? I guess that's now complaining. That's new. The new complaining is... The new whining is, if you wonder what's happening, you're whining, Right? If you ask a question, you're whining, right? If you hurt and you go, ouch, of course you're complaining and whining then. If I hit you as hard as I can in the face and you, and you respond to that, ouch, I must hit you again because you're not supposed to say ouch. That's just how we roll, is what they want to tell us. Come on, Zeph. It's not that bad. Look, there are kids at Disneyland riding the... The little, tri the little, you know, uh, Alice in Wonderland and the little Mad Hatter thing, you know? I'm not going to come to a resolution here. I'm just going to say, Lord, please heal all these people in Jesus' name. Heal us all. Help us. And I don't understand, and neither do they. None of us do. Why do you do? did you do this? Why? Why? It's the excuse of we did it is really running thin right now, Lord. I mean, come on, that's not really even, that doesn't even make sense anymore. 